Joining us now to analyze the coverage of the Trump and Clinton stories, as well as tonight's big debate, Julie Roginski, Fox News contributor and a Democratic strategist. Tucker Carlson, the co-host of Fox and Friends Weekends and editor of The Daily Caller. And Heidi Presbella, senior political reporter at USA Today. Tucker, you have a nuclear explosion yes. in the media over this, over a decade-old tape. Republicans bailing right and left. Now, look, the words are disturbing. Yeah. They're, not, they're indefensible, but... I was watching CNN and MSNBC. I mean, it's on hour after hour after hour. Is the news business overplaying this just a bit? The words are indefensible. They're not inexplicable. And that's why the coverage is so misleading. I mean, nobody is actually shocked by this, and everyone's pretending to be. So just make it's not Manufactured it's, outrage? It's, it's entirely manufactured. It's in totally ersatz. This was one of the recurring guests on the Howard Stern Show. This is Donald Trump. So everyone knew that Trump is capable of this. Everyone who knows Trump knows he speaks like this in real life. Maybe not to disagree, but in the ballpark. And what bothers me is two things. One, the press is, has no moral standing to judge anyone who talks like this, having spent 25 years in newsrooms. Like, this is not, you know what I mean? Like, spare me the pearl clutching. You, but, you've heard plenty of locker room talk. I, I have. But the other point I would make is it's misleading to pretend that Trump is being abandoned by the Republican leadership because they're so outraged. John McCain is not pulling his support of Trump because he's so offended. This Navy veteran is so offended by this. He just doesn't agree with Trump on the issues. He thinks being connected to Trump hurts him politically. That's legitimate. I'm not attacking it. But that's a very different thing from saying he's so morally outraged he can't possibly be associated with this guy. Julie, we're going to see. So Tucker is saying, you know, hardly shocking. We've heard the old Howard Stern interviews. And so a lot of this is just whipped up from people in the media and politics who do not like Donald Trump. Well, so I agree with Tucker on almost everything. The only difference here between locker room talk that maybe Tucker was privy to, I would hope, is that Donald Trump is not just talking about somebody the size of somebody's breasts or all these things that he's talked about in Howard Stern. He's actually talking about sexual assault. He's talking about going up to women and grabbing them by their private parts in ways that I think most people would construe as an unwanted sexual assault. And so when it comes to that, that's where the line is drawn. Listen, I agree with Tucker 100%. John McCain's not bailing because having yeah. to Betsy, all of a sudden we find that Donald Trump is vulgar. We've always known he was vulgar. They're bailing because of politics. But, but for a lot of women, this isn't about just the locker room talk. It's actually about the fact that this locker room talk constitutes something that people are familiar with as assault. Well, let me just say, I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize this in any way or defend it or anything like that or make excuses for it. I'm merely saying that it came from Donald Trump and everyone knew he was capable of this. That's the only point I'm saying. Interesting, uh, Julie, that you used the word private parts because the P word, which we have believed, uh, CNN just showed the tape and showed the P word, the S word, and a whole bunch of other words New York Times printed it. So that's an interesting question. Heidi Presbella, so even if, you know, people are out there saying, well, this is media bias, you don't like Donald Trump. Trump. I mean, you also have the explosive reaction to this old tape, you know, uh, Ryan Priebus and Kellyanne Conway bowing out of the Sunday shows, Mike uh, Pence not making a trip saying he can't defend it, Trump's wife Melania saying this was offensive but she accepts his apology, Hugh Hewitt and Bill Bennett, conservative commentators saying he should drop out of the race. So in part, is the press now covering the reaction to this, even if it's an overreaction? Absolutely. Uh, granted, Tucker is absolutely right that a lot of these Republicans who are bailing have been critical of Trump all along, but a lot of them haven't. Uh, like Bill Bennett, who had been out there essentially speaking, um, sp talking up Trump. Like Deb Fisher in the Senate. Um, there's really only one female GOP senator who hasn't called for him to step aside, uh, which is Joni Ernst. So I can't, I'm hard pressed, and I, as are all of the political commentators, to come up with any kind of a historical precedent for what we've seen. Over over the past 48 hours, not only just in terms of the lewd comments that are also, frankly, predatory in nature, but also just in terms of what we're seeing uh, with this, this civil war erupting in the Republican Party, uh, with, with uh, Republicans uh, down the ballot now as well panicking. Um, and it is relevant and it is significant to play this up because this comes at a time when it appeared, according to the polls, that Trump was really co consolidating the GOP base for all of the rancor that had taken place throughout the primary, right, right. he was consolidating. Well, let me, let me come back to you in this, Tucker, because a couple of Trump tweets, I'm going to rush through them really quickly. The media and the establishment want me out of this race so badly. He said he's not dropping out. He also told us the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. And then this new one, so many self-righteous hypocrites. My question is, you say there's a lot of hypocrisy in the news business. Yeah. I would not give you an argument on that. Is there going to be a gap here between the public 
which may, some of whom may not like this at all, and some of whom may think uh, that this is just, you know, Trump showing off with boys will be boys, and the pundits who are saying, who are actually talking about whether he could be replaced as the Republican nominee. I mean, I, I, look, I don't think anybody likes what Trump said. It's gross. Right. I mean, it's disgusting. On the other hand, there could be a rubber band effect where the outrage is so phony and so overdone that some people say, you know, you know knock it off. I, I, I dislike you more than I'm offended by Trump. But I would just say this. Here's the dishonesty, is that the people who are opposing Trump now have real reasons to oppose him, I think. They're totally legitimate, but they're pre-existing. I mean, the same people who are abandoning him now didn't want him to be the nominee. They were the same ones six months ago talking about taking it away from him at the convention. They have pre-existing reasons for opposing him. And, and that's fine, but we should just be honest about it. Julie, let me read you uh, some excerpts from, from the coverage. CNN politics editor said on the air, it's over for him. He's like some Central American dictator. Uh, Politico, no candidate has entered a debate so cloaked in disgrace. New York Times, this turned a boorish man into an outright predator. I have the impression, and also following reporters on Twitter, that there's a lot of glee in this, that a lot of people in the media who never liked Trump, who said he was never going to win the nomination, would kind of like the quote victory of seeing him pushed out of his Well, race. there's two things going on, and then I'll make a personal observation. One is Trump is a complete creation of the media. The media. No, he's not. He is. I'm sorry, Howard. He got millions of the Republicans me, voting. Me, you he, get he, off he, that? He did because the media rode this horse all the way to the nomination. They covered his press conferences. They never broke to go to Ted Cruz's he press conferences. He gave more interviews than anyone in the history he, of television. Excuse me. He broke. <laughs> he didn't cover wall to wall press conferences for Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio or Jeb Bush. They did it for Trump because his ratings were good. And the ratings were good because he was say crazy stuff and people wanted to tune in. So that's one. Two, I will say to you that reporters love nothing better than to build somebody up and tear them down. And that's the fact. And I think to some extent you have a point there. And uh, third, and that one I agree with. The third observation I will make yeah, is quickly. as a woman, very quickly, we all know this guy. It may not be a big deal to some male reporters. Every woman out there knows this kind of guy. We've all encountered this kind of guy. I don't think there's gonna be a rubber band effect among women because women know this guy. We've seen him, we've experienced him. And that's what women don't want to see in their president. And Heidi, what about Billy Bush, who's now a co-host of the Today Show? He's seen playing along on this tape. Uh, he's apologized because he's embarrassed and ashamed that he did play along. Um, you know, is he going to take a hit in terms of his NBC career? Or there are reports that NBC is not even planning to reprimand him. A charitable interpretation. He's just kind of an overeager sycophant who is kind of rooting um, Trump on. But the really damaging part is uh, when they get off the bus, and he he knows what's been going on in the talk, and and that Donald Trump's kind of put the tic tac in, and and kind of like pushes him onto this woman. So I think based on the reporting that I've seen, this could be a real problem, just given uh, not just what happened, but also the demographic of the audience that he that the Today Show reaches which is mostly women and also the fact that this could make a lot of the his female co-workers uh, as well uncomfortable and who knows I guess we'll find out on Monday when he was supposed to be co-hosting again what actually happens a lot of times in these cases um, when something like this happens the, the the host or the personality will go into a hibernation period uh, but I guess we'll find out on Monday Right. What's interesting is that Megyn Kelly, who just criticized uh, both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, said on her show, uh, Donald Trump, with all due respect to my friend at 10 o'clock, will go into Hannity, pretty much only Hannity, and will not venture out to the unsafe spaces these days, which doesn't expand the tape. And Hannity tweeted back, uh, uh, you should be mad at Hillary Clinton. Clearly, you support her. They've since made up. They sent out a picture. But Trump is pretty much staying off of any non-Fox outlet. But, Tucker, I know some people out there, and I see some of this online, are saying, well, what Donald Trump said is just talk, but Bill Clinton, he actually had affairs, including with an intern in the White House. There's an allegation of rape. Uh, are the media going to buy into that argument? No, well, they, well, they hate Trump. Of course, they're not going to buy into that argument. Is it a legitimate argument? I don't know. I mean, I think he's, as a political matter, better served by talking about what he believes and what he's going to do for the country. But, I mean, I do think it's worth preserving this distinction because it's a real a meaningful one and a legal one. There is a difference between talking and doing. There is. If I say, you know, I don't like you, that's different from hitting you in the face. And so I'm not defending anything that Trump said, and mm -hmm. I didn't like it. I've got Three girls. I don't like that stuff. Yeah. But to call it assault is like to devalue assault because it wasn't assault. It was. It was. It was something different. It was. It's not the same as physically attacking someone talking about it. It's just not. It's really brief well, response. Well, brief response is that he's actually talked about having done this, not just talk. He's boasted about yeah, it. Okay. And that's a big difference. I mean. No, but okay. But then then so, we can call what he did assault. You can give me the specific time that he did, it, and then I'll say that's assault. Well, wait a second. He's, he's boasting about this now. You don't want me to take him at his word on this particular issue. He said he's done yeah, it. I'm now we're saying he's a liar. I'm not defending the guy. Don't I mean, devalue the word assault. I, I'm not devaluing it, but I'm telling you, if somebody 
comes up to me and says, I'm going to grab you by the you-know-what, that to me, without my consent, or kiss me without my consent, that to me is the definition of assault. We'll be, it is. We'll, we'll just be shaking hands at the end of this segment. <laughs> you All can right. give me a hug anytime. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.